Hey, you're most good job, ladies and gentlemen, kings, queens. How y'all doing? Y'all feeling today? We got the final mysterious 48 hours of speaking knockers. Found lifeless in the garage. Reading that, yo. Reading that shit just now, really like. Y'all yeah, don't even get it, yo. Like, if you know me, like, for the people that know me, like, yeah. Like, this is really, like, this has really been my favorite artist. Like, like all time, been my favorite artist. Like, man, I remember bumping this nigga and then figuring out this nigga had passed away. And I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. Was, was just listening to him daily, 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 daily. And then it was like, hey, you know this nigga died? Huh? Man, let me tell you. Man. That shit crazy. And it's actually insane. It's been a damn decade, son. It's been a whole ass decade. That's just so crazy to me, bro. I ain't gonna lie, but nah, I ain't about to, I ain't about to, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, RP the fucking goat. Alright? RP the young legend. Alright, let's get smooth to this man. This is brought to us by uh Dose of Mystery, you know what I'm saying? Come on. So I spoke to him it was the day he went excuse me, the day he went missing was actually on his father's birthday. So I said okay, and then after that I didn't speak to him anymore, but he took his dad to dinner and then and his brother to dinner and he dropped them off. And I pay attention to behaviors. And so I noticed that something was off. And so I called and he wasn't answering the phone and then it kept going to voicemail. And, and so when he missed his meeting, I knew that something was wrong. So I called the police and they said we had to wait a certain amount of time because, um, you know, you can't report anything yeah. that fast. So I went, I was just thinking the words, like, I'm like, what could happen? Like, did somebody kidnap him? Or, what because there was a time when they did their search according to reports they ended up finding him in the garage nah seeing these pictures pop up just now was almost made me shed a turn late moment. april 2014 a young rapper producer by the name of derek McAllister, aka speaker knockers was in conversation with his mother misha wilson Man. The topic revolved around two things. First, they talked about the different things speaker knockers intended to be doing at that point in time in his life. The second thing was something familiar to the yeah, journey. This nigga was 19, my nigga. I, yo, I always be thinking about that shit. Like, I, I've been saying it for the past, I don't even know how long. Like, well, pretty much after I, I'd probably say since I've been, since I turned 20. I'm about to be 23, son. I outlive my favorite artist. That shit is insane to think about. That's terrible. Very terrible. This nigga was young as shit, my nigga. That shit never doesn't bother me. Like, every time I hear this nigga music, every time, yo. When Nick, when I play Don't Know, like, I always feel like I, 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 I ain't about to get the chat. All right, come on, bro. Hurry, Murph. That shit crazy, of bro. life for a teenager. Love. Speaker knockers had a girlfriend at the time, and the situation between them both had friction that led to a fallout. His mother, whom he trusted as someone who could help fix whatever roadblocks he encountered in his life, stepped in and assisted in resolving the issue. Little did she know, that would be the last face-to-face -face interaction she would have with her son. Wait, so wait. Let's think of, wait, how could you was based on this true story? I mean, it makes sense. That's, that's a good-ass track. But, man, bitches ain't shit, my nigga. Oh, my. Shit hurt. I ain't gonna lie. That shit hurt. I put some voice in that bit. Um, DTB. Yep, rumors. From, uh, he was, he had a girlfriend at the time. And he said, uh, before, like right before this happened, before he called me, 
he always used to say like certain things and I told him I said son you may have more money than me you may have more than me I said but you don't have the wisdom that I have you're always going to need your mom so never forget that and so he always had this saying um, mom fix it a couple of days later on March 4th 2014 things would take an eerie turn for the worst leading to his untimely passing what made it even more heartbreaking was that it was his father's birthday and with speaker knockers ended up in the situation that claimed his life. His mother would speak to him over the phone earlier in the day. It seemed he trusted her with sharing his plans. Wait, do we have, wait, do, do we have the facts now? Because I, I've been here and I had this nigga pass for years and niggas have never, you know what I'm saying, been clear cut stuck on one thing, but I really always wanted to know because Man, that shit never doesn't bother me. Again, this nigga was 19, my nigga. R.I.P., bro. Rearrest. Of the future and goals he wanted to accomplish. Because this conversation was about businesses he'd like to venture into on his own that wasn't under his parents' name. His mother would advise him on the best routes to get things set up before speaker knockers told her he would speak to her later and he was in preparation to take his brother and his father to dinner for his father's birthday. On his father's birthday, and we were talking about some business that he was trying to get on his own instead of um, having it like in his parents' name. So I was talking to him and telling him what he needed to do or whatever. And so he was like, well, I'll talk to you later, mom, because I'm gonna take dad and you know my brother to dinner because we were separated. So he said he was gonna take his father and brother to dinner for his father's birthday. Everything was going as planned. Speaker knockers, did in fact take out his brother and father to dinner to celebrate his father's birthday. At around 11 p.m. that night, he dropped off his father and told him that he would be back. That, unfortunately, never happened. Was he still a knock? With the knock? following day- Is that Mook? Was he still a knock? I'm confused. Wait, uh, let, me, let me let them finish before I start talking. ...to dinner to celebrate his father's birthday. At around 11 p.m. that night, he dropped off his father his and father. told him that he would be back. That, unfortunately, never him. happened. With the following day, March 5th, 2014, coming around, his father awoke with still no return of his son or any contact from him. He would call Speaker Knocker's mother, asking if she heard from him as he was supposed to return to collect something, but he never did. And then and his brother to dinner, and he dropped them off, and he told his father, "I'll be back." And it was, I think, it was like eleven something or something, and he never came back. And so he called me. That his, I think his dad called me that morning, and he asked me, "Did I hear from Derek?" So I said, "No." He said because he left something here or something like that. It's so long ago, but he said he left something here, and he said he was coming back, but he never came back. At this point. His mother was already worried because she knew her son. Speaker Knockers was a man of his word, and if he had stated he's coming back, then that's exactly what he would do. Her fears of something being wrong would grow even stronger as the days progressed. No matter how much she dialed his phone, it would continue going to voicemail with no response. Speaker Knockers also had a meeting to attend to that he never showed up to. If there was one thing that Speaker Knockers was very conscious and focused on business. was his business endeavors. Gotcha. So the fact that he didn't show up to his business meeting was more than enough to raise the antennas of his mother's instincts to the point where she knew her son was in danger. I just was just thinking the words, like I'm like, what could happen? Like did somebody kidnap him or what? Because there was a time where I came home from selling cake on a Saturday and my window was broken. Somebody in the neighborhood or somewhere took a brick and they broke my window and then they got on Twitter and was bragging about it. At this point, she sprang into action, taking her concerns to the police station Weird where she requested shit. assistance in finding her son and she knew something wasn't right. However, the 24-hour time frame had not passed where they had no contact with speaker knockers, so the police couldn't yet treat the situation as a case where her son was missing. She tried to get some rest and told speaker knockers' father that they'll contact the police again if they didn't find him before the 24-hour time frame. Yo, that's so crazy to me. And this, I'm, I'm not saying anything against, uh, you know what I'm saying, the parents. 
my mother, yo. And it could be like, I don't even know how to say it. Like, I could be like, niggas can know where I'm at. Actually, I don't know how to say it. I just know if my mother didn't hear from me for a while and, and people was already like raising, not awareness, but like concern, like worrying, you know what I'm saying? My mother, yo, she'd probably, she'd be tripping. She would be up for days straight, days on end, trying to figure out where I'm at, trying to get in contact with people, trying to, like, yeah, no, she she would not damn go to them. She would not, she wouldn't rest a second, let me say. All right, but, you know what I'm saying? I'm rest. Irrelevant. That turned out to be an impossible task for his mother to do as her mind and instinct was too strong to ignore and just sleep. Exactly. Exactly. Around 3 a.m., she would jump up from her sleep with the intensified feeling that something was not right. It was Man. then that she tried to call the police again, but she was again told that they wouldn't be able to dispatch help until the time frame that had elapsed. As but as soon as personnel for the department arrives at 8 a.m. in the morning, they would give her a call to provide some assistance. I got up like I, I was sleeping and then something just woke me up like about maybe three o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I got up and I sat up in my bed and I said, something is not right. So I called the police again. I said, please, you gotta help us. I said, something is not right. And so they said, ma'am, we cannot, you have to wait. We'll at least wait till at least eight o'clock or something like that when you know uh, that division gets in and we'll have somebody to call. His mother was adamant something happened to her son, so she took it upon herself to leave home in the wee hours of the night, driving around to places where she thought he could be, or to even check around to see if he may have crashed and unable to get help from where he was. She was doing everything in her power to try and locate her son. Unable to find him, she got back home and went to sleep for a few hours before sunrise. I said, I called the police and they said, there's nothing they could do right now. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like enough because I know my son and he doesn't miss money and he sure doesn't miss meetings. Like he doesn't give his word and not keep it. And so I'm like, for him not to, to miss the meeting and to miss his studio time, that's not him. So I just start like, I went out, was in the middle of the night and I was just driving around and going to different places and ditches and all kind of stuff to see if maybe I could find him or if he was somewhere, or maybe he crashed or, I don't know, I didn't, I'm not saying that he used to drink or anything like that, but I just didn't know what, you know, so I just... The morning of March 6, 2014 came, and in an attempt of desperation, she turned to social media for assistance as her son still couldn't be found or contacted. In the post, she made it known that Speaker Knockers was last seen on March 4th, 2014 at 11 p.m., and he was driving in his 2013 Black Camaro. Posting and updating everyone for helping in finding her son, the police finally got into action, got the missing persons report, and went on a search for speaker knockers. At the time, her mind was bombarded with thoughts on what could have happened to her son. One haunting thought was that he was kidnapped because she recalled in the past, in an area they used to live, she arrived home to find her window broken and the culprit went on to Twitter being the one who did the deed. I just was just yeah, thinking the words right. like I'm like what could happen Aww. like somebody kidnap him or what because there was a time where I came home from selling cake on a Saturday and my window was broken. Nah, Twitter. Right she continued praying. Sadly, the police would locate her son's deceased body in the garage beside his black Camaro at a South Carolina home. Reports state that the coroner, Gary Watts, said foul play was not suspected and an autopsy found no signs of trauma. The toxicology report was in the works and would reveal if any substances were what led to the passing Talk of the young me, rising man. star. The news quickly spread throughout the media of the young prodigy's passing. Friend and collaborator Zach Dillon, Damn, who directed many of the artist's name, videos, was, was among other man. mourners like Young Dolph, Gucci Mane, and the late Fred O. Santana. Damn. Speaker Knocker's mother was almost in shock and denial, unable to even be believe her son was just gone. His brother, who Lil follows Knock. in his music footsteps, Knock. Christian McAllister, AKA Lil Knock, was only 16 years old and in high school when he had to face the reality of his bigger brother oh, being boy. gone. I found out my brother passed away 
when I was 16, I was in high school. With news of the South Carolina rapper Speaker Knocker's passing reverberating through the city, the question began swirling around of how he passed. Speculations began spreading that it was Man, due to an overdose shit. and others stated it was a heart attack. Do we know? His mother, however, would later deny any of those theories, stating her son didn't pass away because of an overdose, nor did he have a heart attack. But she chose to not disclose the cause of the passing due to not being ready to open up about losing her son. Okay. There have been some sites, however, like popular news outlet, The Sun, which issue contradicting statements, revealing that the toxicology yeah, report them, did allegedly state that speaker knockers overdosed on codeine syrup, which induced a heart attack. Whatever the reason for his passing, one thing is certain, a young, talented, and ambitious, driven artist and producer was lost. From a young kid, even after being separated from his father for 12 years, due to him having to serve time behind bars, Speaker Knocker still persevered and his father stuck by his side, doing everything he could to propel him further, even while behind bars. Speaker Knockers was inspired to pursue a career in the music industry after seeing how Soldier Boy created a lane for himself. His mother would try to tell him to have other plans just in case his plan A didn't work. But Speaker Knockers was- By the way, that song, every time I hear it, I don't know, like the end part, that should be, I don't know, I, I get a creepy vibe from this, so I ain't gonna lie. Hey, have other plans just in case his plan a didn't yeah, work but speaker knockers mm -hmm. was confident his music career was going to be successful and that's exactly what it became oh, before his untimely saying. passing a plan like a bang C, going on. just in case your a doesn't work out like and he says the... mom and he chuckled he said mom i'm not gonna need that because my plan a is gonna work you just watch like that. And I said, okay, son. I said, but you know, it's good to have a backup plan. He said, mom, I'm telling you, I don't need one. He went on to create an extensive catalog oh of music. Oh my and gosh, bro. Yo, bro. <clears throat> hey, rank, rank these albums real quick, y'all. Let me, let me see if y'all know something. Let me see if y'all know something. Rank, rank these albums. Break these albums real quick. Me personally, I'm going to. I'm. I'm going. Fuck. Actually, no. Nah, I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of tough. Oh my gosh, that's kind of tough. I got. I got married to the money and and finesse father tied. Them bitches are so tough. Uh, flight delay was cool. I might put married to the money too. Then. And then by the way, man, this is a good. This shit gonna piss me off. Let me get out of here, bro. I created an extensive can, catalog of music and made beats for mainstream artists like Gucci Mane, Two Chains, and Meek Mill, among others. Speaker Knockers was doing all of this without being signed to a major label. Independent. He wanted young. to have control of his music and build his own empire and not wait for someone to see his worth. So he remained independent and launched his own entertainment group named Tailbands Entertainment. Tailband. The final. Yo, gang. Yo, dose of mystery. Don't do that. Don't do that. I, I'll fuck around and click all this bitch right now. How the fuck do you fuck that up? Do not ever disrespect TBG like that again, my nigga. All right, homie. Be clear. All right, reimburse then. The music video he recorded was for the song Ants Entertainment. The final music video he recorded was for the song Erica Kane, which was released Nasty. after his passing on May 22nd, 2014. It, is that why that always gave me a weird vibe? Is I don't know. I feel like sometimes I'll be feeling like a real like energy feeling nigga. Like it's crazy. I, I think I was listening to these songs and not even knowing this nigga passed away. Like, I don't think I realized this nigga passed away until 2015. Like, I wasn't on my, I wasn't on internet. I wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing but music. Music and YouTube. So, when it came to news, when it came to, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know anything about people passing away. I didn't know none of that. You know what I'm saying? It was the same thing with Young Pappy. You know what I'm saying? RP and both. Um... Man, 
Ah, uh, oh, man. Give me all this video, bro. I'm not gonna lie. After he just butchered, butchered TBG's name like that, I really want to get off this shit, but I'm, I'm gonna let you outro it. We got 20 seconds. I'm gonna chill. Alright. Shout out Mook. Shout out Lil Knock. Niggas is... And I hate that Lil Knock hasn't been active like that. Like, I know this shit was fucking tough. Like, I be feeling this shit. I be feeling this shit. And I don't know this man from a hole in the wall. It was strictly up to music. So, as a, as a brother and as someone that has a brother, you know, that has siblings. Man, boy. I don't even want to talk about that shit because that shit going to... That shit gonna ruin my vibe for today, so you know what I'm saying? Hey, Speaker Knocker's impact on the music industry is remembered to this day, influencing some of the industry's biggest artists, Great like the artists. Boogie with the Hoodie and Kodak Black, who remixed his hit song, Lonely. Say another. His legacy will forever live on. Bro, shout out my nigga Tekka, too. Tekka's one of the best new upcoming artists, and he was heavily influenced by SK. RPLA, too. Man, boy, I didn't even know Kodak remake. I might listen to that shit right after I get off this video. Let me just get out of here because I've been doing a lot of yapping. And that's how you know, like, if I get to talking, you know, like, a video is really like. Rest in peace, speaker knockers. G shit. Hey, man, um, I said everything I needed to say during the video absolute legend you know what i'm saying still my favorite artist to this day if i go on my phone i got my playlist ranked hold on i got my playlist in order let me say not really ranked but like in order like so you see i might gotta flip the cam i might gotta flip the cam i got y'all you know quick quick two seconds y'all bear with me y'all bear with me y'all niggas bear with me um how do i Boom. Well, yep, this this is how the camera's normally supposed to be, but you know, for reasons obviously I gotta flip the other way. You see who's leading the charge, yep. Shout out uh tech. You know what I'm saying? Big Sean, Yachty and that shit. I ain't gonna get into all that. Hey bro. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Let me let me revert myself with the hunt. I gotta just press the button, but it's fine. Um yeah, man. Links in the description again, so I appreciate y'all for tuning in. You know what I'm saying? RP the GOAT. Jisha. All I gotta say. Anyways, man, y'all take it easy. This is my last video for the day. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe if something drops that piques my interest. But as of right now, I don't see myself doing no more videos for the day. So, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a good one. Take it easy. Be safe. You know what I'm saying? Good buh, 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 buh. Good buh.